Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary folks and the like. My name is I.S. Jones, director of the Watershed Reading Series with Art Lit Lab, and it is my great pleasure to introduce to you our readers for the Sheltering with Poems Anthology. The Watershed Reading Series is made possible by support from the Dane Arts with additional funds from the Andres Manufacturing Company Foundation, the EBU Foundation Inc., charitable arm of the Capital Times, the w. J. the w. Jerome Frau Chi Foundation, and the Pleasant T. Rowland Foundation. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you Angela Voris Hills, who is the co-editor Sh of Sheltering with Poems. Angela Boris Hills lives with her family in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Her first book, Louder Birds, which was published with Pleiades in, in 2020, was chosen by Tracy Brimhall for the Lena Miles Weaver Todd Prize. Other works has appeared in the Kenyan Review online, Best New Poets, Hayden's, Fam Hayden's Fairy Review, Memoris, and New Ohio Review, among other journals and anthologies. She has received grants from the Sustainable Arts Foundation and Key West Literary Seminar, as well as a fellowship at the Writers' Room of Boston. Please give it up for Angela Voris Hills. Thank you so much. I asked that was, um, it's just really exciting to be here virtually at Artlit Lab. Thank you so much for hosting us here. Um, Artlit Lab obviously has like a very, it's not even a soft spot in my heart. It's like the biggest spot in my heart. So I'm just really excited to be with everyone here tonight. Um, and thanks all of you out there for joining us. Um, we're really excited to share the work from this anthology, uh, Sheltering with Poems. Here she is. Um, I am one of the editors along with Kathleen Surley and Ruth Deathlifson um, and C.K. Kubasta. The book was published by the Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets and Bent Petal Press. Um, Wendy Vardman, who many of you know, is responsible for this lovely cover art. Um, so uh, all around, just it turned out to be such a wonderful book and the poems inside are amazing. Um, there are 89 poems in there uh, by 74 Wisconsin poets, uh, which is just kind of glorious um, to know that there are that many poets just in this anthology and then like how many more are there of us out there. Um, so just an exciting project all around. Um, the anthology came about in the early days of Shelter in Place. Um, so the Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets Conference in the spring was one of the many events that was canceled. Um, and Kathleen Surly at the time asked like what the Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets could do to kind of keep that community going and to maintain a connection to the poetry world. Um, and then she and uh, CK Kubasta came up with this idea. From what I understand, I think it was like them thinking together. Um, so um, yeah, so there are so many amazing poems here. Um, a lot of them touch on mundane things, um, domestic things, uh, you know, toilet paper, masks, bread, <laughs> sourdough bread, um, the things that you might expect. Um, and then there are lots of other surprises um, and just, it's a lovely collection. Um, I'm going to read my poem and another poem from the anthology. Um, and I was fascinated by the idea that while all of these small things were going on and we were all afraid in our own ways um, and looking for connection in our own ways, um, there were also very large things going on that were made a lot less eventful uh, just because there was nobody there to celebrate with us or to mourn with us. So, um, right, like birthday parties were, or like birthdays were maybe a lot less celebratory, right? Um, so kind of along those lines, I'll read my poem and another. The last month, the last months we barely touched. The neighbor got a puppy. There were puppies everywhere. Our seeds arrived mid-June, peas never blossomed, cucumbers bittered. We ran out of flour, had too much flour. I bought a lot of things, oversized egg chair, outdoor table, tandem bike, a pile of books. I fed birds and watched the kids get bored of the slip and slide, splash pad, sprinkler. We bought a trampoline. My mother came to see the garden. A mound of dried grass appeared beside the tomato. Thumb-sized babies wriggled in a tuft of fur beneath it. 
Bunnies played in our bushes. We're gone. Another clump of grass appeared beneath the slide. There were bunnies everywhere. I learned to draw, ordered water, watercolors, collected swallowtail eggs, released 50 butterflies. The chemo stopped working. The coopers, hawks, chicks fledged and perched on our neighbor's antenna. Our yard was littered with feathers, blood. I stopped feeding birds. Suddenly, there was toilet paper and Lysol wipes arrived monthly per my subscription and everything got sunshine, needed daily watering. I watered nothing. I brought my mother to her last appointment. We wiped down the wheelchair with Lysol. The stack of books became unmanageable. I lost my sketch pad, misplaced paints. My starter grew pink patches. I pitched it. I still check the porch each day to see what has been delivered. And then the poem I will read um, from the anthology is by Heather Hanlon um, and it's called Hot Rain Three. I saw the heartbeat of my baby from behind a face mask without a partner. My husband watched through his phone and couldn't make out the new sound or image. The heartbeat looked playful and pretend and felt similarly pretend since there was no one to tell in fear of miscarriage and no one to see in fear of COVID-19. But there we were, two of us in a body curling our fingerprints around what we can touch and learning to wait piece by piece, cell by cell, blood by blood for the next small thing to change. And with that, we will move on to Laura Keller. Uh, Laura's poems have been published in a variety of literary journals, including Blast Furnace, NPR's Tell Me More blog, Poised in Flight, an anthology, Lantern Journal, The New Poet, Midwest Quarterly, Midwest Prairie Review, Read, Xanadu, and Verse Wisconsin. Her poem, On Shano Lake, won first prize at UW-Madison's Writers Institute. Her poem, American Mother, was nominated for a push cart prize and her poem, Bar Keeps Morning, received honorable mention, honorable mention from the Wisconsin Writers Association Jade Ring Contest. She also stitches fiber art using words, paper, fabric, and much detritus. Her work has been exhibited and sold at many regional art galleries. Please welcome Laura. Hi, and thank you so much, Angela, for this opportunity and, and Art Lit Lab as well. I'll read my poem first like you did. Fluid Dynamics. When a runner spits in my path, <clears throat> physics hikes my attention. I calculate the trajectory of his viscous exhalation. Am I a goner? Gravity probably inhales the globs a nearly plumb line of dribble, but the splash of the splash is a sine, cosine, tangential nightmare. Even scientists can't parse the trigonometry of COVID's wanton molecules, the electron orbitals, the displacement of air, of light, its quantum hunger for me. And then I'd like to read Kimberly Blazer's poem. Um, she was a teacher of mine recently, and I just love her work. Tonsorium. Remember the clandestine afternoon, your brother wielding a scissors, random locks of hair on the floor at your feet, hunting for and giggles, jagged, just a game. Today, I watch the auburn strands hit the sink, 
guilty again. But who is left to scold? Repair as my mother did, her lips thinned to a cutting edge. Mirror, mirror, a tricky partner in this pandemic affair. Ah, perspective. I turn my wrist this way, that, too often I miss, cut emptiness. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, that was, yeah, I'm excited you chose that one. It's always tricky because there's so many great poems, like I want to hear them all. So it's nice when we do this. All right, next up is Ron Zerwin. Ron Zerwin is the owner of Avol's Books, LLC. His poems have appeared online and in a number of print journals. Ron serves on the board of the Council of Wisconsin Writers, and his chapbook, A Little Rain, A Little More, was published in 2018 by Bent Paddle Press. Please welcome Ron. Thank you, Angela. <clears throat> My poem is entitled, Where We Stand, and there's an epigraph. Social distancing means standing six feet apart. CNN, March 24th, 2020. Equal to a man of average height, wearing a Lincoln-esque top hat while lying on the ground, or the length of two golden retrievers standing nose to tail, the width of a moose's antlers, standing apart like bedposts, which is what bowlers call a 7-10 split. Difficult to knock down, but not impossible. And the, uh, the poem, other poem that I've uh, chosen is a poem by uh, Jeffrey Johannes. And um, I found out that at one of the earlier um, readings for the anthology, Jeffrey had been kind enough to read my poem as his second poem. So I'm gonna return the favor and read Jeffrey's as my second poem today. It's entitled Contemplation 14. And there's an epigraph. What is the news tonight? Last night, my friend in Minneapolis sat on a lawn chair in his yard drinking tea. It was his turn to watch over the neighborhood in the wild darkness, ash in the wind, flames just blocks away, the voices of crickets. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. I love that, giving it back. <laughs> good, way to, good way to play it. All right, next up is Scott Laurie. Scott Laurie recently moved to Wisconsin, the, excuse me, to the Milwaukee area with his wife and cats after spending the past 25 years in Minnesota. His chapbook, Empty Handed, won the 2013 Emergence Chapbook Prize from Red Dragonfly Press. His poems have appeared in numerous journals, including Prairie Schooner, Naugatuck River Review, Third Wednesday, North American Review, Sow's Ear Poetry Review, Great River Review, Waterstone Review, and The Teacher's Voice. He has been a Pushcart Prize nominee and a finalist for several national poetry prizes. As a 30-year veteran of public school teaching, Scott has read his poems and presented writing workshop sessions to young writers from grades 3 to 12. Since retiring, he has coordinated the Teen Voices Project, a series of writing workshops for Winona teen poets, culminating in a group reading and a print collection of their work, uh, Soundings, which is from Bookshelf Editions. Please help me welcome Scott. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. Um, so thinking back over the last uh, year since most of the, these poems uh, were written, um, and spending some time in this book, it, it, it's really uh, kind of overwhelming to think about everything that all of us have been through. And, and I guess it, it, it leaves me feeling really lucky to have had poetry in my life to both as a reader and a writer to uh, help me get 
through it all. And, and uh, so, you know, thanks to Bent Paddle and, and the editors, Angela and the other two editors of the book um, for helping us with this, you know, book. I think it's, I think it's going to stand up well over <laughs> many years. Uh, so my first, I had two poems in the book. I guess I'm going to read both of them. The first one came out of reading one too many online articles that promised to answer all of my questions about the pandemic. It's called FAQ. How far, how near, how much, how long? Deeper and deeper into the night sky or the space from one breath to another or the opposite of distance. As much as a percent of a percent, as much as the line forms here and goes to there or used to, when did, when would, when will, when is? That depends. Some models are made of polystyrene, of balsa wood, of indigenous bones and tar sand. Remember how you'd hold your watch to your ear, shake it, listen again. Now we track the whisper of real numbers in real time, unreeling, tick by tick. Who knew, who guessed, who says? The president announced in the Rose Garden today he can tie his own shoes and will. Our founding fathers may have seen this in our nightmares, in their nightmares, the mad king, the latest plague. So blame the roses, the takeout tacos, men without masks. You still have the right to remain silent. Our votes don't count, not until we all learn something new. What gives, what kills, what stops, what starts? Everyone's reading again, again. Stealth deliveries spike on piled up porches while the market prints its own silver linings. What if they gave a pandemic and everyone and their dog came out to walk in the sunlight, chaperoned by small children in all the unbleached blooming? Where can, where can't, where as, where now? Spring break moves to happy hour at the ICU. Drinking, still essential, unlike libraries. Ghost town playgrounds, sirens approach, recede. Next neighborhood over, next continent over. As in finished, but over and over, you've been rerouted as have the roads. Wrap yourself inside. Why did, why don't, why should, why not, why might? because we're all in this together means an ocean and where are the boats? Because safety is a thin shelled egg and we want a look because the biped mammals still make a tribe, even intubated, even roaming empty streets, our eyes meet, our hands flutter up saying, yes, okay for now, you too, whoever you are, goodbye, goodbye. And my second one is a little more uh, narrative and um, slice of life-ish uh, about a certain mental pattern that I was noticing in myself. Um, and it's called the bargaining stage. One more morning of nothing yet. Into this vigilant listening, stiff green spears have pushed up overnight. Did they say something? Just birdsong in the bare trees, sometimes a siren. Back indoors, my hands under the tap, scrubbing themselves red when I hear a familiar back brain yapping and think, okay, at least this one I know. If I learn to love one week after another, one day like the next on the wide prairie of what we don't know, if I hold the worst news at six feet and wean myself from wanting it, if we can warm to these no, new go-betweens, porous or not, safer than skin, if we admit we're all confirmed cases, then what's left to wish? Well, of course, another hour, another year, returned to the crowded hall, the coughing throng, shoulder to shoulder, among our fellow mortals. Meanwhile, an April wind sharpens its knives, 
as my son heads out to get us groceries. Intent moves, so listen, keep him safe in his casual armor, and you can name your price. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, I do think, you know, I, I don't think I formally recognized it until you said it, but I think um, already it, it hasn't been that long since, you know, we have been able to go outside. Um, but I think already I had started to forget, right, how bad it really was. And so I do think you're right. I think kind of like revisiting this, it, it's so important that it exists just to remember, you know, where we really were, um, what it was really like. So yeah, great point. Thank you so much. Um, next up is Ahi Lee. Uh, Ahi Lee was born in the Republic of Korea, raised in Peru, and now lives in Wisconsin. She earned an MFA at the University of Notre Dame and is a PhD candidate in poetry at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where she has served as an associate editor for Crame Study Review. Her poetry has been published or is forthcoming in Poetry, Narrative, Pleiades, Denver Quarterly, and The Journal, among others. Please welcome A. Healy. Um, thank you for having me, Art Lit Lab, and thank you, Angela, and all the editors for including me in this wonderful uh, anthology. Um, yeah, I'll just read one poem from uh, the series. The series was called This Month, but I'll just read the last one. Um, this month, the toilet paper is back in stock. The university has sent out its email about reopening at the lake, at the park, inside stores, naked mouths. It's not like I don't understand this kind of fear, the fear of naming a pandemic into reality. I too have veiled myself with the dark side of my hands to hide from myself. But like this, how do we heal? I place an arm over my husband's sleeping shoulder tonight as well. He'll go to work at the supermarket tomorrow again. I squeeze my eyes shut as if the strength of my prayer depended on the sincerity of my eyelids. It's been a while since I've stopped praying for safety. I ask for courage now for, it, for neither of us to stop at sorrow. I pull a chair to the window. This is the fifth sunrise I've seen this month before exhausting myself back to bed. In this early hour of spiders remaking their nets in defiance of yesterday's rain, the clouds wrap their soft mouths against around pale vermilion lights and flare. It's so holy, it hurts. And I'll read another poem from the anthology by Lucy Rose Johns. And it's a small poem, but it, I, I feel like it just kind of, like the image just kind of stuck with me. So um, uh, it's called COVID Isolation. I am afraid I will morph into a garden gnome, stuck voiceless in a cement head, unable to reach out and touch, betraying my anxiety and fear with a sickly, sweet smile. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Um, and I do, I love your three poems all together too. So um, if you have the anthology, go read them all together because it's really, it's great to read them all together. All right, Katrine Talbot, um, Australian born Katrine Talbot's chapbook, The Blind Lifeguard is forthcoming from Finishing Line Press. She has four other chapbooks, including The Little Red Poem, Nouned Verb, both from Dancing Girl Press, Freeze Dried Love from Finishing Line Press, and St. Cecilia's Days, published by Parallel Press. She has recently been nominated for two Pushcart Prizes in Poetry and once received enough prize money from a national poetry contest to fund a Dairy Queen run. Please welcome Katrine Talbot. 
Thank you so much, everyone, for the acceptance of the poem and for putting on these wonderful readings. I am so honored. And, and in being honored, I honor my grandmother because I have her sewing machine. And in the beginning of the pandemic, I was frantically sewing masks, as many of us were, and sending them off to friends in New York City hospitals who really needed them. So this is called Singer. 1933. She's still flexing those pre-war muscles, her piercing hum, her panther eyes. She's sewn her ways through many wars, uniting the pieces, the populations. And now with my version of my grandmother's hands, I begin to stitch through this one against the tyrannical corona mask after mask to protect, prevent, a seam at a time, humming. And of course, I'm the one person or maybe two in the um, reading that couldn't find her anthology. So <laughs> I'm going to read one of mine um, that has come from a year of swimming outside in Wisconsin to keep myself sane, I found a power plant heating, cooling lake that was open water all year. And I ended up swimming in that a lot. So I ended up swimming with great big fish and all sorts of migratory birds, including swans. So this is called swimming with swans. Not always a question of grace, endurance, more often a song of float and preen, and you become a creature of palmate, pass by as a piece of lake shimmering. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, that is amazing. That is kind of a dream of mine to swim with some swans. Um, but also to be real, I had a very big panic right before this reading because I could not find my anthology anywhere. Like I've taken it to so many places and I thought it was in one place and it wasn't. And I really, like I was a few minutes late <laughs> because I was looking for it. So I get it. <laughs> All right, uh, up next is Angie Trudell Vasquez. Angie Trudell Vasquez is the current Madison Poet Laureate uh, and the first Latina to hold that position. Her third poetry collection, In Light, Always Light, was a finalist for Finishing Line Press's New Women's Voices series in 2018. She, she served as co-editor of Through This Door, Wisconsin in Poems, and published the anthology through her small Madison-based press, Art Night Books. Please welcome Angie Trudell Vasquez. Thank you so much, Angela. I appreciate this and um, loving the readings and I'm so excited to be here with some of the people that uh, I greatly admire. So I'm gonna read my poem and I have to tell you, there's a play on the words here. So it's mourning as in I'm mourning the death of my cat and mourning as in good morning. So it's mourning ends with a caw. And if you have the anthology, it's on the page 100, which I think is a lucky number. Yeah, morning ends with a call. We lost those paper boys that summer, safety flags dashed, no bottom of the well to cradle you for the rescue, they vanished. Before it was just us girls, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, cousins, cling to empty hands. At the bus stop before school, a slow car invoked a mad pelt toward neighbor bushes, a blue spruce, a fence's slim slap protection. The ham and organ pounds the glass with its black and white keys. I drink coffee on my deck while the world burns below. Metallic beetles clamp geranium leaves, species from another planet, fugitives in disguise, scarlet head eyes. Little guy next door cannot speak. Mother chain smokes hatching, shares her cigarette, fingertips to lips, wrist handoff, pregnant together, remote. There is sound in silence, she thinks. 
Now marigold is the color of hope and she trusts in dandelions, sunflowers, the sun past rising, butter, it's salty, forever taste, banana, pudding, our dessert most meals, a quick whip, steak night, brilliant, knife and fork, divine kid bites. To turn the channel, use pliers, dear. Salad days, garden prayers, us as little girls, who knew we had it easy? Young snapdragons, gold car, summer shoulder sweaters slip at a concert, fall to the ground. Two wheels christen asphalt, chica sail on the street, pink neon streamers surrender, braids spiral in their hair. Rabbit squirrels haunt the bird feeder, deck yoga, oak branches overhead. A crow cause obsidian, splits the green. This morning ends with a caw. And I think poetry has been my savior through these times. Um, and I was thinking of reading a poem for the 500,000 dead that the mayor asked me to, but I'm wearing mascara and I don't want to cry. Um, so I'm gonna read this poem from Margaret Rosca, which um, is on page 90. And I really just like this because one of the things um, I've noticed is I'm trying to be so strong, but sometimes I crack, right? And things leak out. So this poem really touched me because if you know Peggy Rosca, you know she's a rock. She's been through a lot. This is Margaret Rosga's Maybe It's Just Allergies, and she's the former Wisconsin Poet Laureate just passed. Maybe it's just allergies. It's nothing, she tells herself. It's a nothing that feels like something in the corner of her eye. Irritating, so, so she wants to rub it in these days when you are not supposed to touch your face. It's 75 Fahrenheit inside, 72 outside, rain in the forecast, trouble on the horizon. The chickens come home to roost. Prophets turn over in their unmarked graves. She who has been in denial realizes these raw voices were prophetic. She wrote rain without closing the loop of an A so that it looked like ruin. And the sentence read ruin in the forecast. Sometimes she says more than she intended. She lowers her shoulders, straightens her back, blinks away the trouble from her eye. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was great. I, I mean, I feel like I could say I love those poems about every poem, but I do really <laughs> I love those poems. So thank you very much. Um, next up is Jesse Lee Kerchival. Jesse Lee Kerchival is a fiction writer, essayist, and poet, uh, also a translator specializing in Uruguayan poetry. Her most recent books include the poetry collection America, That Island Off the Coast of France, winner of the Dorset Prize, and the short story collection Underground Women. Her memoir, Space, won an Alex Award from the American Library Association. Her translations include The Invisible Bridge, Selected Poems of Circe Maya, and Love Poems by Idea Velarino. Uh, she is the Zona Gale Emeritus Professor of English at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Thank you to Jesse Lee for joining us. It really is so interesting to revisit these poems because it's, I think for all of us, we're feeling we're going back to the first days of the pandemic. And, um, and I think that's a good thing to do. I agree with everyone else. We should really forget this. And I was lucky enough to have two short poems in the anthology and I'll read them both. And the first one's called Pandemia. This morning I thought, I cannot trust my eyes. There is this thing, this not at all visible that is trying to kill me in the air, on this apple, on this book, leaving nothing safe, not even the air, not even the soft breath of the man I love. This morning, the world I knew ceased to exist as if snatched up by the hands of an invisible crowned thief. The second one, I should say, that although I've lived in Wisconsin for 34 years, I was actually in Montevideo, Uruguay, when the um, pandemic cat and was really locked down, locked down, locked down on the top floor of a, the seventh floor of an apartment building. 
And this is one of the poems I wrote by looking at, out the window and writing a poem about the view from each window. Uh, it's called Sheltering. This is the hour when the sun comes back. This is the hour, the sun. This hour, this sun. The hour is the sun. Open the shades, open the window. Let us see this hour, this sun. When this sun is here, where are the people? Where are the people? You know, the people you love, the neighbors, the strangers, inside, somewhere. You know where you are. You are not going anywhere except bed, sofa, kitchen. Soon you will take a shower. Now across the street, behind that empty office building, flame, fire, sun, and birds. Thanks. Thank you so much, Jesse Lee. Next up is Lee Catherine Hodge. Lee Catherine Hodge is an artist and writer living in Milwaukee. Her work has appeared or is forthcoming in Granta, Thrush, Heavy Feather Review, Euphony, Heartwood, The William and Mary Review, Clinch Mountain, After Hours, Funny Looking Dog Quarterly, Mouth, and the Tulane Review, where she was the spring of 2020, the short fiction contest winner. She is currently the associate editor of the Cream City Review. Please help me welcome Lee Catherine Hodge. Thank you so much. Um, it's really an honor. Everybody has said this. It really is like it's a complete honor to be in this anthology and um, to be in here with Kim Blazer, who's my teacher now, and also a he who's a graduate from my program and also the rarefied air of everyone present, of course. It's wonderful. Um, so I'm just going to read my poem and then I'm going to read um, one of CJ Machala's poems. I hope I'm saying that right. Okay, cool. Everybody can hear me, right? Okay, great. It's been a while since I've had a Zoom meeting, which is weird, but it's, we're, we're doing it. Um, Lunasa. In the first draft of this, a pill is called pill. Mary and I talked about it. I'm getting rehydrated now. The discrete parts of this totality look less separate, less like a poorly curated assembly of side Twombly plasters made collective by the gazes of tourists seeing God in the bathroom's cold glass. I'm less gravitationally affected now. The dark ring left by incisors heels spoken over by the mouth of an earth the clicking of quartz studded teeth setting and resetting the spell every hour of fast forwarding now. The bruise blinks shut and sinks back in. Because of a conversation made of red hots and cortisone slicked over the burnt bridge of a nose, I can remember what is peeling and coming off in the air I fill with texts. Stupid things on purpose. I think we're spiritually connected and we are. What I mean is I want so badly to be connected but I'm only rehydrated. I cling. This is how I know what time it is. Earlier, I walked to the pick and save and got there without a reference to Greek mythology. I reject what threatens to outlive me, punching case numbers from a database into a spreadsheet. My supervisor referred to himself as educated beyond intelligence. This phrase was perhaps the most useful thing I heard all year. Subsequent usage increases, genuine comprehension decreases. Typing the letters J-U-L into Google for the chemical composition of a medication, I end up reading instead the Wikipedia page for an actress born, I now know, near Lunasa, near which it is said rulers are born. Now I'll text you so that you do not feel as alone. I care about you, I support you no matter what, I love you, etc. My birth was not near Lunasa. I am hydrated. The solstice has passed. I'm sorry I couldn't respond. My thigh no longer hurts. And it was just like, Lunasa was pretty recent. So like that was that poem's like one year birthday. And then this poem that I'm reading now, July 4th, 2020 by CJ Muchala, also just celebrated its one year birthday, which is so weird over a time that was like so compressed. It's been a year. July 4th, 2020, village fireworks canceled. Crowds canceled too. We sit on the stoop, you and I, Sans family, sans friends, making do with thunder, moon, and fireflies in this unnatural night. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. That was really 
really great. All right, and then last up tonight is Susan Fire Fire. <laughs> It's always tricky for me. Um, Susan Fire's sixth and most recent book, The Transit of Venus, was named an, as an outstanding work of poetry by the Wisconsin Library Association. Her previous books have been awarded the Cleveland State University Poetry Center Prize, the Posner Award, and the Backwaters Prize. She is a recipient of a Milwaukee County Artist Fellowship, a Wisconsin Board Fellowship, and the Lorene Niedeker Award, she is a recipient of the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee's Distinguished Alumnus Award and an NEA Creative Writing Fellowship in Poetry. New York Times Sunday Magazine, Miss Magazine, Chicago Tribune, Chicago Review, Jubilat, Georgia Review, the Iowa Review, New American Writing, and in numerous anthologies. The University of Nebraska Press will be reissuing her fourth book, The Laugh We Make When We Fall in 2021. Thank you so much, Susan, for joining us. Thank you, Angela, and thank you for hosting this and for along with Bruce and Kathleen bringing this wonderful anthology into, into print and into the world. Uh, I'm going to start with Beth Ann Workmasters these days I want butter. I want the name work master. Actually, my name is said like F-E-A-R, like fear. So there are always all these jokes, but if you had a name like work master, <laughs> that wouldn't happen. Um, briefly, what I loved about her poem is a surprising and subtle way she, she went into it. And I thought it's so true. She focuses in on the small comforts that help us get through times like this uh, using dense imagery and, and wonderful sounds. So uh, this is Beth Ann Workmasters. These days I want butter. This is no time for dry toast, the baked potato or bowl of skinny oatmeal. I want tiny rivulets to fill the nooks and crannies of my Thomas's English muffin. I want the slick of salt and sweet to give shine, give gleam to the bite of life as it is now. To pool around kernels of sweet corn, the crunch and pop of each bite a respite. I want to lick my lips slowly, coat my tongue before swallowing, I don't want the whole stick, not even the fat pat. What drips off is wasted, goes overboard only to stain the tablecloth. But let's be clear, I need enough to yellow this moment, to golden a pause, tenderize this sticky dough of anxiety and uncertainty. I mean, this morning I added dabs to my pancakes and watched as their hue deepened with the loss of their grip on solidity. While maple syrup swirled the slick on my plate, the radio's news slipped down more easily than yesterday. Blessed be the butter. Blessed be Beth Ann for that poem. I found myself, I don't even like butter that much. And I found myself, I know it's a successful poem because I went to find butter to put on my roll the other day. <laughs> I don't usually use it. And, and I'll end with my poem. But I want to say, <clears throat> and some of you probably already know this, but Basho would always wear a bark traveling hat when he went on his adventures. And he had written on the inside brim of that hat, under this world's long reigns, R-A-I-N-S, here passes poetry's makeshift shelter. And I always so loved that idea of poetry's makeshift shelter because I felt that true in my life. And then the anthology came out with Sheltering with Poems, which is the same vision 340, 50 years later. So the poem I'm reading was a sort of shelter, uh, I think a shelter of hope and promise. I'm trying to, it was during the hardest part of the uh, lock lockdown, and I was trying to imagine to put it forth that this is going to end. So it's titled Watch. The world 
will be beautiful again. Mobile morgues will disappear. Dr. Fauci bobblehead dolls like toilet paper will again be easily available. A ship named Comfort will no longer be in New York Harbor. Children will be released from garage playrooms into their friends' yards. Hair will return to chosen colors. Murders rising numbers will once again be the numbers opening the nightly news. Hospitals will be advertising for patients. There will be more cars than Amazon delivery trucks on city streets. Chalked sidewalks will never disappear, but there will be less philosophizing. Courage, stay safe, things will be okay, written in bright pastel chalk on sidewalks will give way to hop, scotch, cross, squares, ghosts will be everywhere. Already children on scooters and in electric miniature bright pink cars and miniature police squads patrol the mostly empty streets. The small drivers insisting their parents off their masks. They don't like butterflies coming from their mother's once familiar mouths. They don't like skulls hiding their father's faces. Thank you. And thank you all for reading. It was such a joy to hear the poems out loud. I read them, but what a joy. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Susan, uh, for reading your wonderful poem and for definitely for that butter poem because I feel like it's a really, <laughs> it's a really good one. Um, yes, and sorry for kind of murdering your name there at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, so used to it. <laughs> um, yes, and so I will hand it back over then to IS. Thank you. Thank you all so much for this amazing, amazing reading. Please give it up for yourselves. If you're at home, we can't hear you, but we can feel your claps. Please clap for all these amazing, amazing, amazing readers. Uh, thank you all so much, Angela Voris Hills. Thank you all so much, Poets of Sheltering with Poems. If you like this programming, please uh, follow us on all of our social media at Art Lit Lab. Um, please also consider donating to Art Lit Lab as your donations keep programming like this both free and accessible to the public. Um, I know we have 10 minutes left, so I think I'm just going to ask one question. Uh, earlier, I, 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 I said something in the, in, the, uh, in the chat. I said domestic gestures, and that seems to be the binding thread of all of your poems, the way in which your poems do what I always loved about poems when I first started writing, how we make the ordinary and what is considered mundane extraordinary and worthy of art. So I'm curious about why, well, maybe it is obvious. We're all kind of trapped in the house and what is, course, what is sort of ordinary becomes sort of the forefront of our work. But how did you all find a way to make the mundane special again to yourselves, especially as the pandemic kind of creates this sort of uh, cyclical life that seems so bleed, one day bleeds into another. And let me know if I should re rephrase the question. I'll say something about that, IS. I imagine all the people outside my windows have this deep inner life and I observe them quite often and make up stories, but I'm, I'm trying to tap into this connection I have with them, right? So for me, it's like envisioning and imagining what's going on in people's minds and their hearts and in their lives. And I think that's worthy. I think our lives are so short to celebrate the mundane is perfect. Thank you. I uh, thought a lot about what my grandmother had gone through because I was using her sewing machine all the time and so that definitely informed my domesticity uh, focus. It, it was really wonderful to think about what she had been born in 1899, what she had been through with and without this sewing machine. So it was really amazing to think back to the other pandemic. Anyway, that's. Well, I was looking forward, uh, but I was so horrified by what was happening that the only way I could write about it 
mobile morgues that somehow was so terrifying to see people stacked. And so that gave me the strategy of looking forward that this will, I mean, it was almost a prayer, this will be gone eventually. So I was dealing with everything around me at that surreal time, awful time, but saying, hoping, praying <laughs> it would soon be over. And I so love what you said, Susan, the world will be beautiful again. I sure hope so. It's hard to remember that during those times when you're seeing, you know, the ships in the harbor taking extra patience and, and the horrors of it all. But it seems we're tiptoeing into a more uh, recognizable uh, daily life. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> with that i believe we can uh close this out again thank you all so much for your time and for your energy um you know and uh tune in next time folks for our august reading thank you all so much thank you thank you